What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. And we got an action-packed episode of SFL football for you guys here today. First off, I want to say thank you again for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers. Did a fun NFL jersey giveaway. I have a video of that that I posted a few days ago here on the channel. And shout out to my guy, It's Not Oreo who actually plays here in the SFL on the Salem Steelhawks for winning that contest. So great job. Thank you guys again. Super, super grateful. Today here in the SFL, we take on division rival Oklahoma City Eels. That is right. We are going down to the pit in Oklahoma to take on subscriber quarterback Mason Buchanan and also subscriber running back Grom Briner. We also got two new subscribers joining the league today. We're up to 37 now in the SFL, so super, super pumped about that. Also, going to take a look at some of the league leaders, at least look at the top 10 uh, in different categories and see if any of our subscriber players are amongst the elite in the SFL. We got a lot to get into today. Cue the intro, man. And over here on the Grand Rapids Lightning, joining fellow subscriber Floyd Butler, we have new subscriber quarterback, and that would be Mr. Lucas Spicer. So shout out at Ghostly6210 in the comments. Actually, the Grand Rapids Lightning used to be the Green Bay Packers, and you see I'm repping my Packers jersey because they just got the win over the LA Rams today in real life, and I made a little bit of quiche because of my Packers covering the spread but lucas here 511 201 out of duke so looking to be uh the next great duke quarterback i don't you know daniel jones being the last quarterback that i can remember from duke i definitely would not consider him great far from it ah! so lucas spicer looking to be the uh representing duke with the elite quarterbacks here and he's pretty solid across the board you know he's an 83 overall team captain you see he's got that that c on his chest there actually gr for grand rapids but he is a captain and 86 throw power 84 deep accuracy 84 medium accuracy pretty good traits but really he thrives when the pocket collapses and he is under pressure so he's got 95 throw under pressure to go along with 95 break sack 89 speed pretty good too but uh, when things kind of break down and the play breaks down, that looks to be when Lucas thrives the most. Lightning beat us earlier. So welcome to the SFL, Mr. Lucas Spicer. And joining my former franchise team, the St. Louis Sentinels, and the only team that we've gotten a victory against so far this season, way back in week one, we have new quarterback subscriber Ashton Saber. Shout out at Ashton Saber. In the comments so no more desmond ritter we had to kick him to the curb and ashen here is 5 8 215 out of michigan he's got 94 throw power so pretty good arm deep accuracy and medium accuracy okay at 80 and 85 but he is a surgeon when he's throwing those quick check downs or drag routes or you know quick slants stuff like that he's got 95 short accuracy pretty good uh decent on the run decent play action as well and 92 speed he's also got some wheels so I know Desmond Ritter was playing really good on the Sentinels. Let's see if Ashton Saber can do the same. And welcome again to the SFL. And got to give another big shout out to Bobby Donuts here on the Albany Argonauts. Shout out at R. Jesus 1111 in the comments. Being upgraded to Superstar X Factor. He did that because he upgraded to the GM role in the channel memberships. I'm telling you guys, check out the channel memberships if you want to support me it's only two bucks a month for the for the low tier level the coach role and three bucks a month for the gm role you get a ton of cool perks and one you know one of those being you get to upgrade your player to superstar or superstar x factor so bobby donuts is superstar x factor we gave him the first one free so he's gonna you know if he rushes for 10 plus yards he's gonna get that x factor ability and he'll have an increased fake out rate and juke moves spin moves stuff like that so Bobby already was playing really good. Now with that X Factor, he's looking to take that next step into dominance. We'll take a look at some of the league leaders around the league. I think next episode, I will go through each individual subscriber stats and let you guys see how your player is doing. But at least want to see, you know, who's cracking the top 10. 
And I already see here in passing Mr. Caleb Hayes on the Savannah Spirits. We just played him and lost to him, and Caleb played really good. He is leading the SFL with 1,445 yards. Not Bo Nix. You guys are probably like, what? Who is this? Huh? That is Drew Thompson, who is our uh, subscriber quarterback. I did not like the 12 interceptions, so I, you know, recreated Drew Thompson as a brand new player. And the former Drew Thompson, who only played one se one game, I had to keep him. I just renamed him not Bo Nix. So, yeah, his yardage was good. But, I mean, look at the 12 interceptions, man. I did not want that on our subscriber starting quarterback's resume. So, if you're wondering, you know, not, not Bo Nix, that's, that's his deal. Kyrie Brooks here, though, at number four in the SFL on the Topeka Silverbacks. He has 1,323 yards on the season. Cameron Moore of the Salem Steelhawks is number seven at 1,199. And then also Ashton Saber, who I just, just joined. So I guess Desmond Ritter was playing really good. Um, he is also number nine in passing yards at 1,172. So nice to see some subscribers in there getting a look at the touchdowns here. Ashton Saber again. Okay, yeah. I guess Desmond Ritter was playing really good. Uh, Caleb Hayes, though, number five. So shout out Caleb Hayes, man. He is He's balling out. That's our division rival, Savannah Spirits. He's got 12 touchdowns. So number one in the SFL in yards and also number five in total touchdowns. And then we got Lucas Thomas here on the Boulder Rockies. He is number eight. And also Mason Buchanan, who we are taking on today on the OKC Eels. He's number 10. So again, lots of subscriber quarterbacks in the top 10 for passing and touchdowns. You love to freaking see it. Get a look at rushing yards here. No subscribers in the top. Well, we have Mr. Bobby Donuts, who I just talked about, the new superstar X Factor. He is fifth in the SFL in rushing yards at 377. And also Daniel Banks of the Savannah Spirits. Spirits are great, man. They're undefeated. And you're starting to see why he is number 10 or number nine, I should say, in total rushing yards at 351. And if we get a look at the rushing touchdowns here, there's uh, our guy, CMC, not, not a subscriber. You know, I don't think maybe maybe he is. I highly doubt it. But uh, yeah, still nice to see some good production there. And there is Daniel Banks again, third in the SFL in rushing touchdowns and also Bobby Donuts here is number 10 so shout out to bobby donuts and also daniel banks for tearing up the ground game here in the sfl receiving yards doesn't look like i see any subscribers i mean there's romeo dobbs and d hop on our tuscaloosa terminators but no subscribers that i see uh break in the top 10 what about touchdowns see if any subscriber wide receivers are killing it in touchdowns Again, there's Romeo Dobbs. He just got suspended in real life for missing practice. I'm going to need you to get it together, Romeo. Do not disrupt what these Packers have going on. But uh, that aside, no subscribers uh, cracking the top 10 in any receiving. We don't have that many receivers, really. Would like to see some more. We got mostly quarterbacks, and it seems like defensive guys. Um, no defensive guys either. Top 10 in tackles. Uh, TFL sacks Roquan Smith actually leads so it's nice to see some Terminators players at least even though our record sucks and we're terrible to start out it's good to see some of our guys uh, here leading stat wise no subscribers but that's okay doesn't look like any subscriber defenders are really doing too much unless somebody has picks no so no top 10 stats for receiving yards and for defensive stats Next episode, again, I will go through the full subscriber stats so you can see how all your uh, players are doing. And let's get a quick look at this OKC Eels roster. Quick look and see what we're up against today. Of course, we got Mason Buchanan, subscriber, quarterback, and also Grom Briner. So a subscriber duo there in the backfield, quarterback to running back combination. Eels got Jordan Addison, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Renfro. Jordan Addison went off today in London. Gerald Everett is the starting tight end. Offensive line, they got Braxton Jones. They got uh, Damian Lewis at the left guard position. Kind of underrated, if you ask me. Joe Titman at center. Right guard is Dylan Reduns. And then right tackle, Spencer Brown. Offensive line doesn't look too great. That doesn't mean anything for us, though. We barely ever get pressure. Trayvon Walker is the left defensive end. Trey Hendrickson is the right defensive end. So got to probably go. Oh, yeah. Got to go blitz counter today. Quinn and Williams starting D tackle. 
And then linebackers, they got Jack Sanborn. They got Tremaine Edmonds. So we got TJ Edwards. They got Tremaine Edmonds, former uh, Bears teammates there. Jelani Tavai is the right linebacker. Corners, they got Sauce Gardner. Their defense looks great. Probably going to be giving us fits all day, I would imagine, as uh, most teams do. Richie Grant at the free safety. Cam Curl at the strong safety. Chase McLaughlin kicking the ball. And then uh, Bryce Berenger putting the ball away. Now, can we get our second win of the season? We're one and four. Eels are two and three. This is a division matchup. So extra, extra important. Got to get a look at these OKC Eels uniforms too. I am trying to remember what they look like. It's been a while since I made these teams now. But there is the Eels home, like the purple and orange combination there. They're way similar with just obviously the more whites. And then I made the electric Eels. That's cool. Look at the lightning bolts on the pants. I know you guys can appreciate that. I really went ham. I feel like with these alternate jerseys, that one is pretty slick. We're going to rock with the standard homes, though. I like this uh, orange and purple co uh, combination. And if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Again, appreciate 1,000 subscribers, but we got a lot more work to do. And without further ado, let's get on down to the pit in OKC and get ready for the game. We're going to get the ball first, so a chance for our offense to come out here and establish themselves early on. We haven't had the luxury. Oh, nice. Oh, we got Jaden Taylor trying to go. The distance there, he's able to get it to the 37. But we have not had the luxury of having the lead too much in this franchise. So coming out here on offense, we got Drew Thompson, who played good last week. One touchdown, 290 yards. He was accurate. He was clean on, you know, the touchdown interception ratio. So really hoping for him to do that uh, again in this game. We're going to start things out here, though, on the ground. With McCaffrey, do not really want to run it towards Quinn and Williams. <laughs> That's never a good thing to do. He's an excellent run stopper. And McCaffrey, a little bit of room outside, but never really developed as Daxon Hill was able to bring us down. There you get a look at McCaffrey's stats last week. Not too much in the yardage department, but he did find pay dirt twice, which was good. And as you see uh, pregame, I showed you he does lead the SFL in rushing touchdowns. So uh, a couple more of those bad boys today would probably go a long way. And we'll come out shotgun here on second and seven. Little bunch there to the right. Ooh. Najoku. Oh, third and inches. Okay. I kind of fell down there with him. I, I didn't necessarily mean to do that, if I'm being perfectly honest. But third and inches, little quarterback sneak action here. I think we should be able to pick this up with Thompson and we do so with ease because the line never seems to pinch on third and goal when it's like an obvious quarterback sneak situation but nice first down pickup by the terms got Hopkins in a press situation here um also got our tight ends as well which we're probably gonna go to our tight ends there's the Joku trying to outrun the defender there Daxon Hill he makes his second tackle I am going to be looking for D hop press situations but I'm not going to just be oh got that ball off just in the nick of time too wow I'm not going to be only you know laser focused on that though like I am sometimes if it's there I'm taking it but you know that's when I tend to throw picks and make mistakes when I start to get locked in on the D hop press so going to be trying my best to scan the field today. Try a little RPO action with Dobbs here. Let's see. Ah, oh, the def defense read that beautifully. Yeah, that would have been a house call pick waiting to happen, I presume. But was not even going to entertain that. Um, but we find ourselves now in a third and eight. I might like McCaffrey coming out of the backfield, although... We got Tremaine Edmonds there. He's a good one for sure, but I think McCaffrey has it, and he does. Such a great pass catching running back, probably one of the best in the league. And if you got CMC on your fantasy team this year, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. I They're saying he has tendonitis in both, both Achilles. That is not a good thing. I mean, it's not like a complete tear or anything like that, but he could be gone for a while i'm looking at dobbs but i'm also realizing that uh, yeah sauce gardner is there i'm not going to be targeting sauce gardner too much 
in this game as that could end in disaster. Nice pickup of eight there but from D-Hop. Try CMC inside zone here from the single back. Need some good blocking. Christian continuing to rack up the rushing touchdowns. Even if the yards aren't really there so much for Christian McCaffrey, he is finding the end zone. I believe what I showed at pregame, I think he was at seven, right? Leading the SFL. That one should put him at eight. And the Terminators do strike first here, which is absolutely huge for us because we don't often do that. Now let's see what our defense has in store. They really need a big game. Oh, a fumble on the kickoff. What? Oh, I wasn't even talking. Hold on a second. It was KJ Hamler. Hang on. Hold the phone. The phone's ringing. Just hold it. I saw Jax Vaden in there. I did. And Jax Vaden has had some really key plays. But let's see what the heck happened. So it was Marcus May on the hit and Jax Vaden on the recovery. Wow. Wow. That is huge, man. That is huge indeed. Oh, I love it. Now let's do something with it. We have to do something with this. We're going to RPO again to Dobbs. We cannot let this great opportunity go by the wayside. Let's see if Dobbs is the read. He is. Nice blocking there from D-Hop. Okay. Big hit as well from uh, Richie Grant. And uh, getting very close to the first down sticks. This is definitely 120% going to be Christian McCaffrey on the give. Imagine going up 14-0. I don't know if I know what that feels like in the series. And McCaffrey getting so close. Going to be stopped at the one-yard line. But how's about these Terminators? Inside zone out of the shotgun. Can we punch this in with McCaffrey? We can because he fought forward. Wow. Going up 14 to nothing. Well, 13. I still got to make the extra point. Those are always a wild card, right? <laughs> That's going to be a good one, though. From subscriber kicker Corey Booter. But man, we just do not get breaks like that in this in the series. Usually it's going, you know, for the other team, right? And man, what a start from Tuscaloosa. We we so badly, badly need this. Another fumble from KJ Hamler. That would be awesome. And no. <laughs> not gonna get that lucky. Mason Buchanan, he has eleven touchdowns and two interceptions. Need our defense to rack those INT numbers up a little bit. First time seeing Mason Buchanan in this series. Uh, he, We saw him in the Madden 24 SFL quite often. He did very, very good too for the Salt Lake City Bisons. But first time seeing Buchanan in this series. And let's see what he's got. Good defense there by TJ Edwards. And that's going to actually be a drop from Gerald Everett. Kind of lost my voice here today. Sorry, the Browns and the Packers played. Browns played terribly. So I was screaming at the television and the Packers played pretty good. So I was screaming for different reasons. So kind of don't have a voice today. It's a check down to Alvin Kamara. And our newest subscriber, safety Brandon Moore, is back there to get him. And that is a third and 14 for the Eels, so surely, I, you know what? Nope, not even going to say it. I'm not saying anything. I'm just going to play some football. Guessing pass, shading inside. Got uh, Grom Briner, number 35 there in the backfield. Let's see what our defense is built for here. And it's going to be a check down to Briner. Austin Kringle got him. And it's going to be a three and out for OKC. And I am A-OK -okay with that. What's up with my camera, man? All right. Yeah, I noticed it does that. Like, it changes my camera on punts. I don't like it. Jaden Taylor back there to receive it. Can he get any blocks? No. We're just going to fair catch it. And this drive is going to start from the third. Yeah, McCaffrey running back, receiving leaders. He is number one. And that's not really surprising. Like, we know he can do that. Um, he does that with regularity. And, you know, he hasn't really had so much. Ooh, I just realized Quinn and Williams and Trey Hendrickson don't really want to run it towards those guys. McCaffrey picking up five doesn't really have the uh, the rushing numbers that you would like to see, you know, from an elite level player like that. But has the touchdowns, has the receiving yards and overall, I would say having a pretty good season. Um, 
Hoyd or Dobbs probably going to be the move. And Thompson is going to get sacked. I tried to step up. Really not trying to throw fum throw in throw fumbles. Can you do that? I don't know. Really not trying to throw picks. So I'm being extra, extra careful. And probably, unless I see Dobbs get open early. Yeah, just going to go underneath to Najoku. I was hoping he could break a tackle. Not going to do it. We're going to let this thing tick down to the end of the first and just pump the ball back to the Eels. 14 nothing. Can we sustain it? That is the big question. I surely hope so because, like I said, we need to win this game. I mean, this is, you know, I hate to say that this is our season hanging in the balance. But 2-4, and four, you're still right there. 1-5, and five, uh, you know, questions are starting to be asked. And you're starting to, you know, kind of look ahead for next year. So we definitely don't want to be in that position. A.J. Cole going to boot it away. And Bradbury right there. I'm surprised that uh, K.J. Hamler took that. Especially seeing as how he already has a fumble and receiving touchdowns. Brown Briner, right there, three. Fuck yeah. Now Alvin Kamara is in the game, as a matter of fact. It's going to be a give to Kamara. Kamara has some room. Amari Taylor is there to stop the first down pickup. But third and one, like, you got to go pressure, right? I mean, right? I don't know, man. I, we're not going to. We're not going to go pressure here. We're going to hopefully just play good coverage. Got to watch uh, Mason Buchanan taking off and running with it, too. Did we just get cooked? By Grom Briner, we did. Oh, my God. What a catch. What a catch by the subscriber out of Duke. I mean, that was like, that was like Randy Moss level catching. And we had multiple Terminators there in the vicinity. But look at Grom Briner able to keep the feet inbounds too. So good for you, Grom. I mean, I, you know, didn't want that to happen. But I'm, I'm happy for you, if nothing else. So come on. Got to buckle down now. The Eels are starting to kind of figure it out. And Silas Vaden. Oh, we were so close. Somebody gets a Buchanan. Force a fumble or something. We're not going to be able to. He slides and picks up the first down, getting this thing all the way down to the 10. Press up a little bit. We are in zone coverage. Yes. And we got Jackson Vaden blitzing off of the edge. Maybe. Oh, he can get to Buchanan. He was so close. And Ground Briner going to break a tackle and... Just refusing to go down. That was the Grom Briner drive. He had that huge catch out of the, uh, I think it was like a wheel route that he ran probably. And also getting that touchdown there. We all we were so close to Buchanan on multiple occasions. And that really is the story of this series. Like, we don't have hardly any sacks. But guys are getting very, very close. Just not able to get the final kill shot. Little TE attack action here. That seems like a good idea. Got to see if we can. Oh, God. Trey Hendrickson is right there. And somehow Thompson is still going. All that for a loss of one. But wow. Like, I thought I thought for a moment there that we were going to be able to escape. And it's starting to happen again. We had such great, great opportunities. And now it's looking like uh, we may squander that. Maybe Boyd or somebody. Uh, let's just go. Oh, God. Najoku. Yeah. Fourth and six. And something's up with my camera angle, too. I don't like it one bit. And we're going to have to. Yeah, like, what is up? My camera is all messed up. We're going to punt it back to the Eels. And they have a chance to tie it up. Kind of fizzled out there on that drive. Another fumble would be grand. KJ Hamler has to be careful. Eel's going to get this thing from the 33. Apparently, we got to watch Grom Briner coming out of the backfield. We know that he is a, a good pass catching running back, and that's going to be a nice catch there. He also picked up the block beautifully on that because we had heavy pressure coming in. So good, good pick up there. I'm going to put Amari Taylor on man coverage there against Hunter Renfro, and we'll see what he does here on first and 10. Lots of motion. In this playbook, I'm noticing, and that's going to be another check down there. Kendrick Bourne and a pickup of five. All right, Terminators, I need you to uh, bring that fire. Brown Briner, watch this guy out of the backfield. Man, we know what he can do. I'm going to have Aiden Leslie drop out, as a matter of fact, and good defense by Roquan Smith. That was Hunter Renfro. He got that ball jarred free. And a third and five here for the Eels. Do we have 
the stuff. I sure hope so because things were looking so great. It's a screen pass. Kringle's there. Took a bad angle on it. And Grom Briner, four catches for 61 yards. He is tearing us up in the passing game. I knew that it was a screen and we just could not get around the blockers there. Very, very unfortunate. And the Eels are moving more motion from Grom Briner. I don't like that at all. Oh, he's going to take off. Come on. Gets a Buchanan. It's Jax Vaden, and that will go down as a sack. We have called Jax Vaden's name a lot in the backfield, which has been one of the real bright spots of our defense, able to stop Buchanan there, make it second and 10. Still watching Grom Briner out of the backfield. I do not trust him. This All this motion that Buchanan keeps running, I don't like it. God, man. There's Jordan Addison looking like the Eels are going to tie this thing up. And we got the ball first, too, which means they get the ball coming out of the locker room. So even with that great 14-0 start, threatening to uh, knot things up are the Eels. And we got to have a little bend but don't break here. Hopefully hold them to a field goal. Buchanan again out of the shotgun and again, Graham Briner in motion. That's why I'm dropping back TJ Edwards here. I don't like it one Bruh. bit. And I don't like that one bit either as it's Gerald Everett. You know, I kind of just want them to score right now to give us some time to put together a nice sustained drive. I really, really, really want to go into the locker room with Elite. Um, I'm not sure if that has ever happened. And I want it to here today. I mean, that was the quick score. And Mason Buchanan and these Eels are going to knock things up here at 14. All right, sports fans, we got about a minute and a half here to put together a drive and hopefully go in. I don't like, what is up with my camera, dude? Like my camera's all messed up, man. I don't like it at all. It keeps like shifting every play and I, I can't figure it out. And I don't want that to be the reason why I do something dumb and mess up. I think I just got it set there. So screen pass to McCaffrey is the call. Can we get it there? We do. And McCaffrey going to get out of bounds beautifully with 57 seconds. Got to pay this thing off with some points here, man. We have to. It is of utmost importance. And we got about 67 yards to go. So got all three timeouts, which is good. But we got to start moving this rock here. And Ajoku, he is actually going to get out of bounds as well. Second and three ball is at the 40. Who is going to get open? I'm just going to D-hop underneath. Again, time really not a factor as of yet. We're going to go ahead and call a timeout. And, if, you know, if it comes down to it, I guess a field goal is okay. Uh, main thing is, though, don't – no turnovers. Like, that would just be absolutely uh, – I don't even know the word. You pick the word. I don't care. Okay. It would be bad. Really, really bad. Let's put Dobbs streak up the middle. They got single high safety. Maybe uh, make him make a decision. Nope. We're going to go to Najoku again. Not going to even call a timeout. Got to kind of go quickly here, but there's no clock runoff when you go huddle, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Maybe Dobbs in the middle, but also maybe just McCaffrey. I mean, he's stuck up on his block. God, dude. He would have been wide open, green grass and blue skies. We're going to send Hopkins on the streak. Probably, though, looking at Fryermuth, but maybe not. Uh, Yeah, we're going to go to Pat Fryermuth. Fryermuth has tons of room. I really wanted to go to D-Hop. I think maybe there was an opportunity there. Like, I might have been able to to pass lead that thing correctly. But at the end of the day, like, I'm not going to take that risk. Not going to take that risk at all. And you know what? Maybe double slants. If we can. Uh, ooh, actually, DeAndre Hopkins, though. Maybe he. Maybe he can get open on this press. Um, okay. My head is underwater. I thought I didn't need you. God, we're going to take the sack. No. Oh. That's the last thing that could have happened there. Oh my God, dude. Okay. That was, that was treacherous. Second and 23. I got to go into my own playbook here and probably just got to go, you know, PA cross and maybe look for uh, Romeo Dobbs. That was so unfortunate, man. That's like the last thing that could have happened there. Dobbs is open though. And Romeo catches it. 
Thank you. You know what? I am just going to take the field goal here. Field goal is a win in my book. I'm not going to do anything that doesn't ensure us going into the locker room with the lead. And that's already not a guaranteed thing when you got me kicking kicks. But I just want to go into the locker room up 17-14. The Eels do get the ball first. But let's please drill this Corey Booter. That one should be good and right down the middle. So all things considered, you know, for us, it was 14-0 Terminators. We let the Eels score two straight touchdowns. Um, we're going into the locker room up, which is always a good thing, but going to need our defense to make a play. Like we're going to need either a sack. We had that fumble earlier, which was great. Interception would also be awesome. And, uh, ooh, we actually got some real live stats here for a change. St. Petersburg Manatees beating the Milwaukee Motors. Motors are 1-5 too, so I guess we're not the only 1-5 team assuming if we lose here today, right? And, oh, okay, now we're back to Bears versus Bears. Lovely. Mason Buchanan starting to put it together here, engineering two really good drives. And really it's been uh, the subscriber combination because Grom Briner, the running back, not doing the most, you know, on the ground, but man, he is lighting us up in the receiving game. And the stats earlier showed you that, you know, that it looks like it's a common thing here in OKC, but nice stop there by Roquan Smith and also TJ Edwards for no gain on the play. To have Amari Taylor play a man coverage on the outside. And oh my God, how was that pass complete there to Gerald Everett? That was a dicey, dicey throw by Buchanan, but he made it look easy. And I think we're going to go a little pressure here. Now, this could be a bad idea, but, you know, sometimes you just got to do it. And it's Grom Briner picking up four. I'm actually glad that was a running play because a pass play. We were not really in the best position coming out of the 3-4 to, uh, to defend that. And we're actually back in 3-4 now as well. So, okay, Jax Vaden rushing off of the edge. Can he get back there to Buchanan? Nope. The wide open Alvin Kamara of all people. The running backs torching us in the receiving game. And the Eels are putting together a pretty impressive drive here. Needs something to happen. So nickel blitz here. I see Grom Briner in the backfield again. It's a takeoff from Buchanan. And I mean, come on, dude. Like we're, oh, it's just so frustrating. This series, is, <laughs> this team is frustrating, man. This team is awesome. I love them. But, like, it's the strangest, strangest team that I've ever played with. Like, you know, I've had success on my other series and still may on this, too. Like, it's still very early on. I get it. But, like, this is the weirdest team. <laughs> I don't know. And we cannot ever get uh, sacks on quarterbacks. There's Grom Briner, though. Good defense by Roquan Smith. Got to try to hold them to a field goal. Can we get the Eels off of the field? That is the question. Gotta watch Grom Briner again. Or it's actually Kamara now, too. Gotta watch Kamara. He's just as deadly. Can they ever drop a pass? Like, please, just a couple. We drop passes all the time. Now it's gonna be first and goal set up beautifully from the five. I'm going pressure. I don't care. It's Grom Briner. Come on. Get to Buchanan. Okay. Really searching for that sack, though. Jaden Taylor set the pressure. And, I mean, I think that we're going to go pressure again. It is the same result. And there is Roquan Smith. Thank you. Roquan Smith putting the hurting on Buchanan. Look, he's slow to get up. And he's been, like, you know, he, I think, lead, what did I, I, leading, the, leading the league in TFLs, I want to say. I showed it pregame. I think that was what it was. But at any rate, it's a big third down here. Guess and pass. Shading over top. Keep everything in front of us. And uh, Buchanan changing the play here at the line. We were kind of off sides there. I didn't like that at all. And where's Buchanan going to go? Come on. Gets. Wow, that was so close. That was so, so close. Aiden Leslie with the stop. And <clears throat> let's see if they kick it. I sure hope so. They're going to go for it. Just kick it. Just kick it. Please, we're guessing run up the middle. I don't even care. If we get burnt, we get burnt. It is what it is. But like, oh, God, I don't like this dude. Nope, we're going to get burnt, aren't we? 
Oh, it's a drop. Yes. Great defense by Roquan Smith. Thank you. The truest definition of bend but don't break. But now we got the ball on the one-yard line, uh, which is dangerous, dangerous territory. We have got to get a little bit of breathing room here, so that's why we got big Kyle Juszczyk on the field. But we got to – CMC's got to get us out of this end zone, and he does a great job of that, picking up six. Now this is our chance, guys. Come on. Got to make this happen. Got to make this happen right now. And uh, if we score here, I feel very confident about this game. If we don't, it's still up in the air. Cannot take a sack in this situation. Nice adjustment by Pat Fryermuth. And he's going to get this thing all the way out to the 23. So second and four. Coming out shotgun here in a little mesh spot. My voice is completely shot. So I am sorry about that. We got an open receiver. It's Tyler Boyd. And he's going to get this all the way down to midfield. Nice drive so far by Tuscaloosa. Yeah, you're probably going to see lots of cuts in this one because I literally have no voice. It has Sunday football, not the, probably not the best day uh, to record, especially when you got uh, exciting, good games going on. But you know what? It is what it is. We're here persevering, fighting through it, and also persevering, fighting through on this game as well as we are trying to get our second win on the season. Can we do it? I have faith in the boys, but we're going to take a sack. No, we're not. Almost threw a pick, and that is going to be third and seven. To have Dobbs go deep, I may just be looking for uh, McCaffrey on the outside here. He's got... What? Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow. Wow. Okay. He had plenty of room to roam. I'm not sure if that was on Drew Thompson, the quarterback, or if it was on McCaffrey not turning around. But, man, he had a guaranteed first down. And we're going to have to punt with A.J. Cole. And we've had so – like, this is every episode. I'm not trying to sound like I'm complaining here, but, like, so many chances just squandering them. They're going by the wayside. And you got to figure, like, with the way our defense, I mean, they, you know, they only got 14 points, so they have played pretty good. But uh, that last drive was way too close for comfort. Deep Buchanan snaps his ball. He does not have to, and he will not. So as of right now, nobody scored in the third quarter. Eels came close. 17-14, we are holding on to a three-point lead by the skin of our nards. And we just got to dig deep here and really, I mean, even if the Eels score, you know, that's we'll have a chance to come down and take the lead. But really just hoping that they don't. Like, whatever that means. If that means a sack, if that means a interception, a forced fumble, whatever the case may be, we just need something. Brown Briner going in. Mo that's actually Alvin Kamara there. And we, oh God, thank God he had to die for that. Or else we would have been cooked. Brandon Moore there in coverage and another first down for OKC. Second and six ball is on the 42 yard line. Grom Briner going in motion. So you know what that means. We got to have somebody out there watching him. And Buchanan thought about taking off, but threw it cross body. And it's another big pickup there by Kendrick Bourne, who's really starting to come alive. And the coach wants me to go prevent, just like they always do. It's so dumb. Makes no sense to me. And do we dial up pressure? I think that we do. We are going to dial up some pressure here. Not sure if it's the right call, but I just feel like we need something. This is probably going to be a Briner run. No, it's not. There we go, baby. Who got the sack there? It is Aiden Leslie. Really needed that. Drop in Buchanan. Going pressure was most certainly the right call there. And they still want me to go prevent, and I still don't understand it. This is not the time to go prevent here, guys, all right? Not the time at all. And can we get some more pressure? Maybe with Roquan Smith. There goes Grom Briner. We're going to cancel Blitz, actually. And Buchanan firing. 
Hit and Renfro, but still eight yards to go. This is the play of the game for the defense. And you know what? We're being aggressive again. I don't even care, man. We have to do it. We have to make something happen. There goes Graham Briner. Surprise, a freaking prize. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. Buchanan, no! It's Jordan Addison. Ah, uh, just getting it just barely. Um, Man, oh man, dude, we got so close. That was the drive of destiny, I feel like, and we just were not able to finish it off here. And the Eels in very, very good scoring opportunity here. It's going to be a give to Grom Briner, and we're there to stuff him with Shelby Harris for a nice Let's loss of four. third and 14. Holding them to a field goal would be awesome because that would give us the opportunity to uh, drive down, kick a game winning field goal, or possibly. A touchdown whatever the case may be and keep everything in front of us here that that is our one job our one job is to keep everything in front of us here it's gonna be motion again as it typically is and a ground briner how does that happen a third and 14 run and it leads to a touchdown that is un believable just unbelievable i i i frankly can't believe it oh james bradbury block kick he got it and it's picked up by brandon moore this is huge this is huge this is huge brandon moore gonna take it all the way to the house for a two-point play so a field goal now would win it it would win it so all we got to do is get down here in field goal range. That was James Bradbury on the block and subscriber kicker Cameron Moore on the scoop and the score for the rare two point extra point play. And I mean, I am just praying to the Madden gods right now. Drew Thompson, we're going to be doing safe underneath stuff here. Probably screens if the coach isn't calling it, which they're not. I'm going to the favorites. I do not care one iota all we need is a field goal and yeah what's up with this camera dude i do not like it at all uh mccaffrey's gonna be the guy come on get off your block christian he does and picks up decent yardage i mean we'll go screen again heck why not it worked last time maybe it'll work this time as well and christian mccaffrey will get a first down uh, right now, just get me in field goal range here, and hopefully I will be able to do the rest. Will I truly be able to do the rest? I don't know, but just give me that opportunity. I like uh, McCaffrey here on the Texas route. If it's not there, maybe we hit. Uh, it's there. It's No, it's not. Yes, it is. Oh, God. Such a roller coaster ride of emotions, and Drew Thompson... Now 19 for 22 for 203. McCaffrey up the middle. Does he have the stuff? He does. And just go down, Christian. Don't be fumbling it. We're getting very close to field goal range now, which I definitely, definitely love to see. All we got to do here is play smart football. And, you know, they. I don't want to kick a field goal, though. It's the thing because they would probably ice me. So let's just do what we have to do. It's Pat Fryer move, catching it underneath and getting very close to the first down marker. But right now, the key, we got to get a little bit closer for me to feel confident, but we really want the Eels to use up those timeouts. And right now you figure, oh, they're actually not going to call one. So I am not really in uh, any hurry. Any rush to snap this ball here. Test the outside with McCaffrey. See if we can get some good blockers, which we kind of had there for a minute. And you're curious when the Eels will start to burn some of these timeouts. I mean, you know what, guys? I'm going back to actually maybe RPO. Maybe RPO. I was going to go back to screen, but I kind of like RPO in this situation. Uh, looking for Romeo Dobbs. Eels actually did call. A timeout too, um, by the way. And Dobbs going to catch it. And that should be the first down. All right. Eels are going to burn that timeout. But um, if I'm iced kick, I could be at the one yard line and I might miss it. Like we saw that.
couple episodes ago. Uh, so a touchdown here wouldn't actually be the worst thing in the world. And I am going to try to actually get it. I'm in RPO again, but this is going to be run all the way, man. Like I said, we are not passing this ball. And this should be set up beautifully for a kick here. We're going to let this thing tick down all the way to about the three. They will not be able to ice us and a chance for our subscriber kicker, Corey Booter, to come in and give us our second win on the season. Wouldn't that be something? We're going to call a timeout here with three seconds and come in for hopefully the game winning walk off kick. Here we go. We got to silence up and focus in. That thing should be good right down the middle. And Terminators are going to finally, it seems like it's been for freaking ever, man. We're going to finally get the win on a walk-off Corey Booter touchdown. Defense played good. Uh, it's the, definitely the lowest amount of points that we've allowed this entire season. And our offense did, they were shaky at times. But we did just enough to ensure the victory. And how about that block from James ba Bradbury and scoop up by Brandon Moore scoring a defensive touchdown. That was 100% the play of the game because without that, a field goal would have only tied it. And that allowed that field goal to, or wait, would it have? I don't know. All I know is that allowed the field goal, allowed us to go up as opposed to not. And that was the ball game right there. Mason Buchanan had a good game, 264, two touchdowns, and Drew Thompson had 221 and no touchdowns, but also no picks. And you know what? I can live with that. Ground Briner, six for 20 on the ground, one touchdown, but that is not where he carved us up. You're about to see here in a minute where that happened. Mason Buchanan went two for 24 and CMC 17 for 69. Nice. And two touchdowns. Now receiving, this is where Ground Briner tore us up. Four for 61 and a touchdown. Kendrick Bourne had a good game. Najoku, McCaffrey, they had good games. Uh, really not a whole lot of action. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins, only two catches, too. Wow. So not a whole lot of action there, but we got to take a look at the defensive stats here for the Terminators. So Jaden Taylor, six total tackles, no picks, nothing like that, but that's okay. Brandon Moore, four total tackles, two TFLs, a pass deflection, but how's about, well, it's okay. Yeah, not a touchdown. I'm sorry. It was the rare extra point, two point conversion, which will not show up on the stats. But that's okay. Aiden Leslie, a tackle for loss and a half of a sack. That is awesome to see. Jax Vaden had one sack, a TFL, to two total tackles. That's awesome. Amari Taylor had two tackles and no passes defensed. Austin Kringle, two total tackles and no stats for Mr. Silas Vaden, unfortunately. But a great game for the Terminators. Forgot what a win felt like, so that's good to, to get that back again. And now let's take a look at the subscriber stats here around the league in the SFL. Salem Steelhawks absolutely demolished the San Jose Industrials. And we get a look at subscriber quarterback Cameron Moore, a perfect 158.3 QB rating, 292 yards, three touchdowns. Wow. What a game there from Moore. And getting a look at the receiving game here, Yeezy Fuentes continues to dominate, though. 7 for 83 and a big touchdown. So that was not enough to will his team, you know, to victory, unfortunately. But still a good game nonetheless. And we got some uh, subscribers here. Not Oreo, who just won the NFL jersey giveaway. He was pumped up, so he had four tackles, a TFL, and a sack. And then also we have Daniel THG here. He had three tackles, no sacks or picks or anything, but a good, good game from the Steelhawks. Older Rockies win a close one against the Memphis Suns here. Got our subscriber uh, quarterback and running back duo here, Lucas Thomas. 308, two touchdowns, the three picks. You don't like to see that, but it was enough to uh, just slightly edge CJ Stroud. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got to get freaking Najee Harris out of here, man. Lucas Thomas, though, did have a touchdown, 6 for 27, but I got to make sure he gets the bulk of the carries. Oh, that's Lucas Thomas. No, we have another, yeah, Austin Lucas, man. Wow. Okay. Austin, if you're watching, next episode, 
I'm kicking Najee Harris to freak out so you can get the bulk of the carries. Topeka Silverbacks drop a low scoring game to the Massachusetts Smithies and we get a look at Kyrie Brooks here. 121 and a pick. So definitely not his, his best game. Silverbacks were doing very good up until this point as well. And uh, Jaden Daniels on the Smithies was able to outduel him. A tough, tough loss there for the Silverbacks. Rochester Rebels pick up the win against the Akron Summits. And we got a couple subscribers here going at it. Chase Kaiser went for 207 and a touchdown. And then Dragon Zetron 254. Good yardage, but no touchdowns, no picks. Definitely could have used some of those. And we got to check out our receiver here, subscriber Tommy Pickle. He went three for 36. No touchdowns, but you know what? Most important stat is the W, and the Rebels were able to pull this one off. Jersey Shore D's pick up a big, big win against the St. Louis Sentinels. We just added a quarterback here, Ashton Saber. He went for 244, one touchdown, two picks, and we have to play the Jersey Shore D's the next week, and I am absolutely shaking in my little space boots. And we also got to check out Jesse Moore had a great game, six for 84 and a touchdown. You love to see that. And we also have a defender on the Ds here as well. That is Aiden Grau. He had two tackles and also a pass deflection. So good overall game by the Ds. Dang, the Destroyers put up a goose egg. Wow. Sharks 20 to nothing victory over the Destroyers. And what? I don't think I've ever seen a stat line like that. 45 yards? Three of five? Like... <laughs> I am so, so confused right now. Um, Alexander Kleblek had like a third of that, really, if you think about it. One for 11. But what a strange, strange game. 20 nothing loss for the Portland Destroyers. Grand Rapids Lightning just added a new quarterback to that team. They get a two-point victory over the Fort Worth Rough Riders. And Lucas Spicer went for 237, one touchdown and two interceptions so you know the two picks definitely not the best thing in the world but ultimately his team uh did get the win and we have subscriber receiver here floyd butler two for 11 so nice win by the grand rapids lightning savannah spirits cannot be stopped they pick up a 41 17 victory over the north carolina flyers and i mean caleb hayes early nods for mvp possibly he had 276, four touchdowns, no picks. And I mean, he's playing like a man possessed, like a spirit, really, if you think about it. And also Alex Thompson, uh, subscriber, brother of our quarterback, Drew Thompson. He had 160, two touchdowns, no picks, but you know, not a lot to write home about there. Tight end subscribers everywhere here. Dallas Bolton, six for 82 and three touchdowns. Are you kidding me? DeAndre Smith had six for 65, a touchdown. George Smith, four for 46. Daniel Banks, three for 39. Daniel Banks also killed it. Well, not killed it, but still a good game. 17 for 80 in the rushing department. Like, these spirits are a problem. They are literally a problem. And we also got some subscriber defenders here. Trustin Smith had two tackles and a pass deflection. Jackson Prime had two tackles as well. I believe that's it, question mark. Yes, I think it is. So what a just dominant, dominant season, really, by the Spirits. Albany Argonauts get a touchdown of victory over the Edmondson Coyotes. And we got to look at my man Bobby Donuts, 88 yards and a touchdown. So his good season continues. Remember, he just got elevated to Superstar X Factor by being the GM role and the channel memberships. So if you want to be an X Factor as well, check out those channel memberships today and a great, great performance here by Bobby Donuts. So overall, I am happy about that one, guys. Very, very tough game coming up against the Jersey Shore D's. That one, it could be rough, but you never know. Maybe we turned over a new leaf and maybe... We're on to bigger and better things. We are going to be at home at Skynet Superfield. So that does help. But I am going to go get some freaking tea and honey and some cough drops and rest my voice because it is pretty much shot. But a Terminator's victory makes it all worth it in the end. So that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. 
I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.